Hello Vinyl Community, this is Tommy in North Carolina and I'm going to do a video now on something I probably should have done a while back but it's more fun just to talk about records and things and so I haven't done this yet but I know this is a topic of interest for record collectors and I'm going to throw uh, my ideas into the, into the forum about it and it's probably similar to what most of you use or many of you use and I know it's debatable and there's a lot of uh, opinions about it, but I'll show you what works for me. I'm going to talk about record cleaning and how to clean records. Now, I've used different methods over the years. My buddy Sean in New Orleans, hi Sean, he has a nitty-gritty that I know costs uh, a lot of money. It works very well, but I know that he's had issues with it. I know he watches these videos too, so I'll probably comment below on any issues he may have with it. But it's a nice cleaner. I mean, it, it obviously it's expensive, but I think even the cover he bought for it cost a few hundred bucks, which... That's just nuts. And I mean, if you give me several hundred dollars to spend, I'm likely to spend it on records and not on any kind of cleaning thing. So I've, I kind of do it on the cheap, but these, these methods do work for me and I'll kind of share, share them with you. Uh, first off, for a really dirty record that I know is just uh, going to need some help and some TLC. Uh, and I'll give you an example. I bought a uh, Mono Lee Hazelwood uh, record several years ago that was really dirty and I think probably the fact that it was so dirty was the reason I got it for as cheap as I did. Because those records are usually not not very cheap. Uh, but because it was really filthy, well, we used the nitty gritty on it. Uh, but I'll tell you what worked the best on it was the wood glue method. Now, I know a lot of record collectors are a little leery of putting wood glue on their vinyl. Let me tell you this. I, I can say, and there's several videos out there that you can look up that will show you how to use wood glue to clean your records. But I will tell you this, Tightbond 2 is the only brand of wood glue that I use to clean my records. I don't use anything else. A lot of times when you hear horror stories about wood glue cleaning, it's because somebody did not use this exact brand. So I'm gonna tell you from my standpoint, this is the only brand, this is not an endorsement, I don't like getting any money from Tightbond 2 or anything like that, but Tightbond 2 is the only one. So if you go to Lowe's, who I don't think carries this, and they don't have it, don't just get wood glue because you might have a horror story on your hand, and so don't um, tear your records up. And I also suggest starting on some cheaper records that probably aren't as valuable and you just want to try it out and get your technique down. Um, a lot of people, we I, I, I recommend getting a turntable or something with a uh, motor that works, but it doesn't really work. You don't want to tear your good turntable up by spilling wood glue all over it. I've actually got to where I don't spill any wood glue when I do this because I've, I've done it so much. But uh, I will say, get something, and like I said, there's videos out there that show you, but you, you turn the, the wood glue, you get it kind of a swirl around the record, um, you know, going to the outside. Then I use a plastic card, an old grocery store card or anything, and I just uh, put it on top of the record as the motor is spinning and just kind of let it even out. I don't press down on it. I don't do anything like that. I just get a nice even uh, spread of the wood glue across the surface of the record from the dead wax to the uh, to the outer uh, of intro to the record. And uh, once I spread that wood glue out, I leave the record out overnight as long as it takes. I make sure it's completely dry uh, before I peel it. And you know it's completely dry because it's dark. Don't try to peel it off uh, if you see wet spots on there because it's going to cause a problem. So there is a method to using wood glue, and it does work. I can vouch for it. Like I said, the Lee Hazelwood record that I used, uh, and I brought that record back to life. It went from virtually unlistenable to a, a playable record now. Um, still not exactly perfect, but it did pull out a lot of grime and dirt out of that LP, and I can actually play it, and I feel good about putting it on my turntable with my good stylus and, and things like that. So uh, the Tightbond 2, I know that they carry this, I believe, at Home Depot. Um, pretty much uh, any of your, uh, I think, Ace hardware stores uh, carry it. I wouldn't use any other brand. And so I'm telling you, if you've got a, a nightmare story about using wood glue to clean your records, it's probably because you didn't use the right brand or anything like that. This has worked really well for me, and I, I can definitely recommend it. Now, just for a general cleaning, Groovy Cleaner works really well. Uh, you can get this from Bags Unlimited. Uh, it's just a spray bottle. You spray the record down, and then you dry it with a lint-free cloth. Uh, this is another thing I can't stress enough. You've got to use lint-free cloths to wipe your records with. I wouldn't use anything else. Don't use a rag or, a, or anything with any kind of uh, 
any kind of chemicals in it or anything. But the Groovy Cleaner is a pretty good standard just spray down cleaner that works. Now, for just a, if I go to a flea market or something, I buy some dirty records and I know they need a good cleaning, I'm not going to let a dirty record keep me from buying a record, especially if it's one that I want or one that I don't have and, and, and really would like to listen to. Now, I avoid gouges and scratches, and I mean, if it looks like it's just uh, not going to be playable, no, that record's going to stay there. But, but if I can find a record and it's got some dirty spots on it, that doesn't deter me. Um, you know, I've bought some records, even with terrible jackets that were in good shape, but you can always find some records that are common enough. You can buy a good jacket at a cheap price with a, with a terrible, crummy record inside. So I'm going to show you what I use for my standard cleaning. It is the uh, Crossley, uh, and I'm going to adjust the camera just a touch. Hopefully you guys will stay with me and not fall over. Uh, this is the Crossley uh, version of the Spin Clean. I got this because it was a sale price, and it was about $10 to $15 cheaper than a Spin Clean. Uh, to buy these, these are just a plastic cleaner. They're going to cost you usually between, I would guess, 50 to 80 bucks, depending on what you get. Now, there are some spin cleans that are a little more expensive. But I will say, this is the same exact thing. I, I know people are kind of, you know, they don't want to use Crossley products on their, on their records, and I understand why. They tend to be a little bit cheaper and, and everything. But this is, I mean, plastic is plastic in my opinion. And so this is just a plastic mechanism. You do the cleaning yourself, so there's not a whole lot that this is going to do to tear up your records or anything. So uh, it's got the little cover and top on it that I keep. I uh, use distilled water. Now it comes with a bottle of, of uh, solution to pour on the uh, cleaners, but I, I actually do use the Spin Clean that I ordered from Bags Unlimited. So this is the actual Spin Clean uh, fluid because, like I said, this is exactly the same thing. And what it has in here, it's got two felt brushes. Um, there's a lot of videos out there that show you how this works, but it's got two felt brushes uh, inside of it that, um, that, that your record goes between. That actually cleans the records. And it also has, if I can get these back in here, it also has these rollers with the little rubber washer on it, and uh, they can you can clean 33s, 78s and 45s. So anything that you need cleaning, you just adjust the roller to do, and it's it's designed to do that. There's a water depth in there. I'm not going to show you. My one complaint about this Crossley that I got is that it's black, so you can't really see down inside to see how dirty the water is. And there are some the the spin cleans are yellow, uh, which is a good bright color. And I think this comes in a burgundy as well. But I went with the with the black. So I'm just going to clean one really quickly for you guys just to show you uh, what 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 it works and so there's a lot of videos like that out there this is a copy of Miles Davis uh, and he said I usually will put it in just like so the rollers will give it a stop so it doesn't go all the way in it leaves it like that I'm sure you've seen how that works and I usually will go such at least three turns And then I'll go the other way at least three turns. Maybe not quite three turns. I might go less than that. But just to give it another, another turn. Kind of pull it out. The felt wants to come out with you. Lint-free cloth. Drying cloth. And I give it a dry. I don't play wet records, and I don't recommend playing wet records. I just, uh... Unless you just like to spend money on stylus, on needles, I, I wouldn't recommend doing it. But, so, using the lint free is not completely dry. And so I'm not ready to put this on my turntable yet, because it's not all the way dry. You can still see a few watermarks. Now, something that I picked up at a uh, flea market, antique, antique mall recently, was this some, something called a Vaco Rack. Now the Vaco Rack uh, is a record cleaner that I think came out in the 60s and 70s. It was available I think all the way up to the late 70s and it's a motorized record cleaner. Now I got it and there was a lot of, uh, I, I read some stuff up on it about you know using it, not using it. I opened it up, cleaned it up. Now the cork inside was rotted, uh, which I think is pretty standard for these things. 
So there is a store on eBay that I found that sells the little, a little plastic uh, version of it that goes over the motor. And basically how it works is you put the record in the vaco rack like so, and it's very similar to spin clean, and it's motorized. You just turn it on, and it turns itself. Uh, and, of course, it makes quite a bit of noise, so I hope you can still hear me. But you can see the record turning in there. It doesn't have like a strong uh, clasp on the record, so there's nothing in there. All it is is a couple little felt strips along the edge that kind of goes over the surface of the record. But it's got a little vacuum. It's not a strong vacuum. And it just sucks whatever dirt and grime that is on the record. It kind of just sucks it right off. There's a couple little felt strips on the end over here as well. Like I said, it's just a, it's a little motor that turns. I got that for four bucks at a flea market, and I thought if anything, it would be a conversation piece. But I do use it, uh, and it actually helps. There it goes. It's in full, full spin mode now. And usually, uh, this will get, oh, will continue the drying. It'll suck, you know, everything off of it, but uh, it'll get everything kind of nice and ready to roll. I don't know if you can see that. It's a pretty good clean copy of this record of uh, the Miles Davis. So um, I'm going to spin it right now and listen to it uh, because it's nice and clean. I feel good about it. Uh, just as a last resort, I also use the Bags Unlimited anti-static brush just before every spin, which I recommend to just giving it a good turn or two before, before, you, uh, before you actually play the record and put the needle on it. But uh, either way, this is my cleaning method, and like I said, some of you probably will uh, disagree or, or have something to say about it, and that's fine. Uh, these work for me. Uh, I get the records uh, really clean, and I can tell you, uh, having the comparison to the nitty-gritty, uh, I feel like this cleans the records as good as. Now, it's not as easy as the nitty-gritty, or it takes a little bit longer than the nitty-gritty does, so... The nitty gritty has its advantages for being timely and quick, and it's very automated, and you just you just turn it on and let it go. But uh, so this is a more involved process. So if you're if you kind of have butter fingers and are a little clumsy, you might want to get something that's a little more automated because some people you know don't have the ability to be delicate with their with their records, which you do need to be careful about. You know that goes without saying that that you know it's kind of a philosophy of mine that, uh, you know, these records that we're finding, a lot of us, particularly like Beatles records and stuff like that, these records are 50 and 60 years old. Uh, you know, the truth is, I, you know, for me, I, I feel like when I get a record like that, it's probably gone to record heaven because I'm going to take better care of that record than it's probably ever been cared for in its life. Now, I'm not talking about the audio file that, that has passed on his collection or anything. I'm, I'm talking about you know, the 14-year-old girl that, that bought Beatles albums back in the 60s and probably played them on plastic turntables. Um, so so these LPs are very durable. Um, now, I do understand the importance of, of making an effort to take care of them and to be conscientious of that, but I also understand that, you know, with the different methods of cleaning and the care and the way we kind of handle our records these days, that uh, these records are, are in, in really good shape uh, and that, that there's not a whole lot we can do to just totally tear them up other than, you know, throw them on the ground and run over them, which uh, would be a nightmare for me. So uh, like and comment below. Get into the discussion. If you've got some cleaning methods that, that, that you use that you, you prefer, let me know. I'm always interested to learn new things. Um, as I said, the, this method works for me. It works very well. So, um, you know, I know different people have different ways and some people are a little scared to, to use, uh, certain things, but, um, that's what works for me. And so, um, hopefully that helped out a little bit. Thanks for watching. Like, and subscribe. Do all the things that I normally tell you to do. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. It's Tommy Burton 75. Uh, and you can see what I'm listening to. And I hope you guys have a good rest of the weekend and I'll see you next time.